Welcome once again uh, to the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We're now joined this morning by Professor Emeka Ozoji, the Director, Center for Nomadic Education in the University of Jos. Good morning, Professor Ozoji. Good morning, Professor Ozoji. Can you hear me? Hello. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very well. Thanks for joining us. All right. Can you hear me clearly, Prof, uh, Professor Ozoji? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Sir. All right. You're welcome. If you can be more audible. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm, we're just trying to start with asking uh, for latest updates from Plateau State. Um, the news reports say that 36 people were killed, you know, in the latest, latest attacks. There's also been evacuations from the University of Joss uh, because of the crisis also happening over there. So can you give us the latest updates uh, from uh, Plateau State? All right. Okay. Good morning, presenter. Um, the situation in Joss, Plateau State, is calm following the imposition of uh, coffee, 24-hour coffee in the city. And uh, people are really complying with their coffee. Everywhere is calm. People are not moving around. And uh, I think if we are to continue this way, before long, the coffee will be reviewed. I'm really impressed with the response to what uh, to the government uh, call for coffee. Yeah, but you know, would you say the curfew is the answer to ending the killings in in uh, Jaws? Well, it is, I suppose, because if the curfew wasn't imposed by now, the story would have been quite different, and it would have been more disastrous. So I think I would commend the governor for taking proactive measures to increase the period of curfew from six to six to twenty-four hours. And that has actually brought the situation to very normal for now that people are indoors and it's, it's actually helping. All right. So n now let's talk about, you know, see, seek details into what exactly is happening. Um, what would you say is responsible for these killings? Who are these people that are committing these atrocities? Well, this is a security issue. And I think we have to listen to those who are... Uh, responsible for handling and managing security in the place. Uh, as a non-security person, one cannot make exact guess of what uh, uh, actually prompted or what, what caused the situation on ground. So for all we can say is that we know something is happening. Where it is coming from or who caused what, one is not in a position to say or to know because is not one, within one's area of, uh, uh, of action or jurisdiction. I mean, but, I mean, don't you have, you know, any ideas whatsoever, you know, where this might be coming from? You know, are these communal clashes, are these attacks by, um, you know, uh, militia? Um, and of course, this includes also the crisis. Now, now, let's also go into the University of Joss, where you're, you know, a, a, a professor. Um, yes. In the last, you know, few weeks, we've heard about, you know, um, state governors sending buses to evacuate their indigents from the University of Joss. So you're in the University of Joss. Can you also give us some clarity as to what is going on? Um, when the, while the problem started, the University of Joss was uh, running her second semester examination for 2019-2020 session. As it was in the middle of that exam that this problem started. And the uh, university administration took very prompt action by suspending the exams for that week, hoping that uh, the situation will return to normal for us to continue. Unfortunately, it didn't. And quickly, the university administration now uh, extended the suspension of the examination until further notice and ask students to go home until the situation is normal, then they will be recalled, given sufficient time to come back and resume their exams. Yeah, but you, you mentioned, you know, that it was during the semester examinations the crisis started. What I'm trying to get, and this is what I hope that you'll be able to share with us, what exactly is the crisis? That, that's what we are trying to understand this morning. It, because this is a university community, so what exactly is the crisis that you're speaking of in University of Jones? The university's community, 
and we only hear that this has happened or this is going to happen. What comes that is within the people outside the university. But we know we, we experience the ripple effect of um, the, the situation, the scenario in the city. But for us as academic staff, the university as a member of the community shares in some of the pains of what has happened. For instance, right now, students are home, lecturers are not going to work, university is more or less like a good start. That is the simple effect of what has happened. And for as long as it is this way, there will be no progress in the academic calendar. And that will set us back, really, rather than moving forward. Has there been any, any incidents that have happened on campus? Come again. Have there been any incidents that have hap uh, taken place on campus? Well, apart from the people that were killed the first time that it happened, no other one has actually happened. And um, I would not pray that any other one will happen within the university community, either as staff, uh, staff or students. Right now, students are at home, so we don't expect them to be affected. Yes. Okay, so, so can you also share a little bit about the, the first incident, the one you're referring to? Um, what was that incident about? Uh, sorry, come again. I'm asking about the incident you just referred to. Can you share a little bit you know, more information concerning oh, certainly that? certainly that the influence, the, 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 the university is part of the ecosystem of the, of the community, of the state. And now all the, all the businesses that depend on students and staff are all grounded. And the community, immediate community of the university is like a ghost town. Those that apply and convey students to hostels and uh, lectures are not there. The food vendors are not there. Those around the provision shops and all that are not there. So it affects everybody within that community. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to get, and an apologies that I keep, you know, happening on this, um, you mentioned an incident that happened there the first time on campus that, of course, yes. you are saying, yes. you, you know, there is hopes that it never repeats itself. That's, so it's that yes. incident I'm trying to get. Was that also, you know, a killing by a militia, you know, on campus? Was that a communal clash on campus? Was that a, a tribal clash on campus? Well, the, all I can say is that um, we were all in the campus doing, carrying out our legitimate activities when it started. And um, the coffee that was imposed, not many, but not everybody actually had or got to know about that. But those that got to know actually stayed in the hostels. Quite a few, probably for one reason or the other. For instance, the, the lady, the student that was going to church run into this type of problem. But apart from that, um, everyone that thing was quite normal. And the, 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 the loss of life, those few students was very, actually, of, very unfortunate. And we pray that uh, we don't experience such again. Parents didn't send their children to school to experience that type of uh, situation. And we pray that when we have the opportunity to call back, we confine ourselves to our activities, run our lectures, write the exams, and bounce back to normal flow of academic program in the university. All right. What's the current uh, security situation in uh, JOS? Uh, are there security agents, you know, you know, are, are across the city? Well, the, the town and gown. The town and gown effect of the university and community is still there. And uh, we hope that we will live peacefully and um, we will respect each other's rights to live peacefully. And uh, because that will give us the opportunity to benefit from each other. And that is what our prayer is. You know, what I'm asking is you know, now that there is a curfew, uh, is, the, is the town, is the community? Um, you know, are there security agents currently present in, in that community? Well, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult for me to say because I'm in my house. As a responsible citizen, I'm in my house. So I wouldn't know precisely what is happening out there within the university community. 
But I know within where I live, everybody is responding and everywhere is calm. Okay. You know, and, uh, you know what, other, what other response would you want from the governor of the state, Simon Lalong? Uh, come again. I'm asking what other you know, steps would you expect from the governor of the state? Oh, well, I, I, I'm actually full of praise for the governor for actually taking that uh, immediate step to impose the curfew. And I believe, as a chief uh, secretary officer of the state, is the administration will discuss probably with our own administration. And when they put their heads together, they will come up with a, a level playing ground that will make for peace and comfort for existence. I'm sure at that level, the governor is responsible, the active vice chancellor of the university is also responsible, and two of them will never allow this type of situation to drag for long. And I'm sure they're actually putting their heads together, they are discussing the issue, and before long, the actions, the meetings they are holding will bear fruits. And no matter what you have Professor Emeka Ozoji, thank you very much for uh, thank you very your much time. for thank the opportunity. This morning. All right, um, um, some of these conversations are really in, uh, set for truth and clarity with regards to what exactly is taking place in Joss, and you know, so that um, the media itself also stops misinterpreting uh, some of these things. Um, we will, of course, we'll be speaking with someone else uh, in Plateau State this morning to understand better. You know, if these are communal clashes, if these are killings by militia groups, if these are killings by bandits, um, or if these are religious, you know, issues once again. Um, I'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by someone else who, of course, is uh, reaching out to us from Plateau State this morning. Welcome once again uh, this uh, morning on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're now joined by Dan Manjang, the Commissioner for Information, Plateau State. Good morning, Mr. Manjang. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning uh, uh, in Nigeria. Good morning, everyone. All right. Um, let's get into uh, the discussion. We, you know, I, I want us to start with getting some clarity as to what exactly is happening in JAWS. Yeah, well, uh, what is happening in Joss is in the public domain, but I can tell you the official uh, issue is officially is that there is a curfew that has been uh, imposed on uh, just north local government, uh, just south, and then uh, uh, just not just southern uh, uh, Basa local governments. Uh, this curfew we had, we we yeah. Hello? Go ahead, Mr. Manjanga. Can you hear you? Yes, I said what is happening is that there has been a curfew imposed on just north, just south, and Basa local governments. We were on the verge of relaxing the curfew in just north because it was for 24 hours. Uh, when we, when, when, when we, when uh, we had a carnage the day before yesterday in the night, we had an issue, people were killed, scores of people were killed. And so what happened, uh, what has happened right now is that the curfew, the 24-hour curfew on Just North uh, was restored uh, under the directive of His Excellency, the Governor of Plateau State. Uh, we, arrests have been made if you had, the, if you have, uh, if you are privy to the press release that was issued by the Director of Press and Public Affairs, arrests have been made. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Manjang, I, I, yes, I, I have... You're not hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. We're aware that arrests have been made. I think the papers say about 10 people have been arrested. Um, but, you know, what, I'm, what we're hoping that we would understand is what exactly is causing the killings in Joss? Who are these people responsible for these killings? Can you share with us from what you know you know? Yes, from, from, from what we know, uh, like the one that happened last week or thereabout, uh, the, uh, the arrest will, will show, uh, will, will now unravel the people that are doing the killing. 
But we wouldn't want to stereotype the people. The security is doing that. But I can tell you what clearly is playing out is historical. It has been over the years. What is clearly playing out is that apart from the criminal element that is involved, there's every attempt to be able to chase people from their land and then, and then uh, occupy it uh, uh, because that has happened in the past. And what government has been able to do is to provide the enabling law to uh, an anti-grabbing bill that has been signed into law by His Excellency, the governor of Plateau State. And so we expect that people would now go, uh, will take advantage of this law but I can assure you that uh, it's clearly it is, apart from the criminal elements that is involved, it is an attempt to, uh, because of the pressure on land, to be able to chase people and then occupy their land. Uh, so so who, who are these persons that are trying to occupy the lands of uh, people in Jos? The, the, like I said, the investigation is, is going to show it's not for me to say this, to stereotype a people now, because these people are all, the arrests have been made and investigation is going it's on. Stereotyping. There are people that have made, there are people that have made confessional statements even in the past week. We're putting, even uh, pointing, accusing fingers to some community leaders that have been on bail. Well, and their bail conditions have been, have been, have been uh, 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 considered. And uh, we take it from there. The, the, the judiciary, the onus rests upon the judiciary to be able to tell us who these people are. Yeah, Mr. Manjang, you're not necessarily stereotyping uh, anyone. What we're trying to understand is, you know, who these people are, you know, that are trying to chase residents in, in these communities in just away from their land. It's, it's not stereotyping anyone. It's simply saying that, you know... The investigations, are, the investigations are going to show who these people are. Investigations are on. It will amount for, it will amount for me putting the, the, the cart before the horse. Okay. When uh, investigations is not, is not concluded, it's going to be prejudicial for me to do that. But when the time comes and, and the investigations are concluded, we will we'll put it in the public domain. At this moment, we'll not be able to put it in the public domain because the investigation is going on. There are people that are handling the matter, and I cannot go on public television and then go ahead of them and say, these are the people. I'm not part of the arrest. Probably, probably the commissioner of police will be able to tell you. Okay, now, now let's also talk about the um, reaction of the um, Plateau State Governor. Uh, there was a curfew. Um, you know, that was imposed in just north, which has now been extended, you know, and made to a 24-hour curfew. Um, do, would you say that a curfew uh, initially failed and this might be, you know, uh, work this time? We wouldn't say that the curfew failed because without that curfew being put in place, the situation would have escalated. It would have been worse. It would have been a free-for-all fight on the streets of Joss and beyond. And so the curfew has been able to put people in check wherever that they are. The curfew has been able to put, allow security to occupy these areas and bring to the barest minimum the carnage who would have been experiencing on the city of Joss. Yes, there are the pockets of even killing during the curfew period. But it is not enough for us to say that the curfew failed. The curfew as far as we are concerned as a government, has, uh, is doing what it is supposed to do, is providing the, 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 the enabling environment so that uh, we can checkmate this kind of crisis. Otherwise, it would have been a free fall. And, and, the, and what I'm saying is there's only three local governments out of the 17 that this thing is happening. It has not even spilled over to any of the local governments. So we thank God that the situation and the peace initiatives that we are putting, the curfew being one, uh, has been able to contain the crisis where it is at the moment. On the state level, Mr. Manjang, um, this isn't the first time that we're hearing of, uh, sadly, it's not the first time we're hearing of a, a situation like this or killings in Plateau State in the last couple of years. 
Um, has there been anyone in the last few years that has been prosecuted um, to the full extent of the law, has been arrested and prosecuted uh, for these killings? As a state government, I was managing information during the past administration, and I understand, I understand the issues very well. There was the Nikki Toby Commission of Inquiry set up by pre administration before the other one, the Joshua Dari administration. The Jonah Jang administration had Bola, Jibola, uh, a commission of inquiry. And I can assure you that uh, go what government did is to be able to come up with white papers to provide the enabling environment to make sure that there's prosecution. One of the issues why people are so angry is because the, 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 the provisions of these commissions of inquiry never, uh, never uh, have not been implemented. People are calling, and we also call for the implementation. I can tell you that uh, the Nikki Toby, for the Nikki Toby uh, Commission of Inquiry, for example, indicted a commissioner of police and said that he should be relieved of his position, but he was instead promoted to the position, to the rank of an IG. These are some of the things that, that pain us. Uh, people would say, what have you done uh, on your own part as a government? Government has been able to be magnanimous to come up with the white paper in the first place. Otherwise, if the white paper was not brought, uh, they, you you not have anybody to you not have the, the the document to prosecute. And you know, you me you know that prosecution depends on it's at different levels. For for government to be able to provide the white paper uh, is good enough, and there are other levels the courts need to prosecute individuals who feel they are shortchanged. The white paper provides for them to go and seek redress in the courts of law, and those are the, those are the issues. Government yep. cannot do what people need to do. People, there are things that government would do, and there are things that the people they would do. There are things that other arms of government would do which they may not seem to be doing. So, okay, well, so are, are you then saying that, you know, progressive gov uh, governments in Plateau State have had their hands tied and not been able to prosecute anybody, you know, for these killings, including those who have been arrested in the past, because now there's more arrests. Um, so, you know, would these people who have been arrested and investigated, you know, would you say that they also will not be prosecuted? Yeah, when you talk about government now, then you have to specify. You have to define which part of government. The executive arm of government has been able to provide the enabling environment by coming up with the white paper. And so the executive arm of government will not, go, will not arrest. The executive arm of government will not prosecute, will not take people to court. But the enabling environment has been provided by coming up with the white paper ratified, duly ratified by the State Executive Council. So, so what you are saying now is that the state um, security agencies, the state's criminal justice system has not been able to act on recommendations from the Plateau State government over time. It's not what I am saying. If people have been, have been given justice, there are instances whereby, whereby people were caught in this state in the past, in the life of the past administration. They were taken to court. In, in the process of them being prosecuted, their court files were, were, were transferred to Abuja, and that was the end of it. It is in the public domain. At that point, what would the state government have done? Because they were being prosecuted in the place where the, according to enable, the enabling laws. This is, this is what we are saying, that justice, if justice is not, is not done, it's not only seen to be done, justice must, seen, must be done so that, people, so that it can serve as a deterrence to others. But what I'm saying is that as a, as, a, as a government, the enabling environment has been created so that justice can be delivered to those that feel they have been shortchanged. The um, uh, governor of uh, Plateau State was also, you know, seen to be uh, to have visited President Muhammad Buhari, um, not a few, but sometime this week or sometime last week. Uh, can you confirm that there was that visit, and you know what the conversation was like in Asurok? Yes, there has been. The, the, there was that visit, and the conversation is also in the public domain. The conversation is talking about the state of security of insecurity.
of the state. Uh, the conversation is talking about the humanitarian crisis that we have. And the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has given directive that the Minister of Humanitarian uh, affairs should uh, be should take charge and should come to the aid of Plateau State because we have that uh, we have uh, we have that at the back of our mind and what the governors of Tachisi states are saying they should be they should not be called only uh, chief security officers of their states but they should be, be given some semblance of authority to be able to command the troops and that is uh, state police uh, 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 policing and in some instances community policing. But the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has been up and doing, he has cooperated, has directed the Inspector General of Police to send detachments of, of, of mobile police to come and uh, reinforce the, ones, the, the, ones, the, the security uh, men that are here on ground, and that has been working for us. Without this uh, cooperation, without the federal government, I don't think uh, we would have been where we are. The little would have been done that the president has acted within the capacities of his, uh, of his um, uh, powers. But what we are saying is that there's still more that needs to be done. Like people would always say, as Oliver Twist, we'll always ask for more. If there's anything that we would ask, uh, it also, we also want to appeal to our brothers and the National Assembly because it is the constitutional matter. Let them give the governors the teeth to, back, to bite, not for them to only back, not for them to only uh, buy vehicles, uh, buy, buy gadgets for security, uh, fund uh, security, and at the end of the day, they cannot command even a, 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 a boys' brigade, a captain of the boys' brigade. Yeah, but, you know, there's also uh, security votes that are being sent to the governors every month. I'm sure you are aware of that. Um, there's funds being sent for security, and so it's expected that you know, the governor should be able to make use of those funds in somehow or some way to ensure the protection of lives and property in his state. Don't you agree with that? It's being done. That is being done. That is why we are supporting the security. That is why in Plateau State today, we have the Peace Building Agency and we are supporting the agency with that. That is why we have the Interreligious Council where we are supporting them. And that is why we have, as a state, we have Operation Rainbow, which is a semblance of the state police, and we are supporting them. And that is why in this state, in Plateau State, we have been able to employ 3,500 youths and posted them to 17 local governments and trained by the police for intelligence gathering and, uh, and matters like that. And it has helped. It has yielded results. Otherwise, if we had not done all those things, I can assure you, we live in just. The problem is with people is that people that don't live in this inside just uh, the problem they don't know what is happening. Without these initiatives that we have put in place, there would have been no plateau state today. I assure you. Okay, so so you know, share with us, you know, and I hope that we can. Or oh, before you, 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 I get into that. I, I want you to go a little a little deeper with uh, some of the concerns that you made. Uh, you, you stated earlier. You said that there has been a white paper. There has been a you know you know action plan that has been stated over time by uh, governors and governments of Plateau State, but there doesn't seem to be action from the executive. Um, you made mention of people who have been arrested, who have been found culpable, and their files are transferred to Abuja, and that you know, seems to be the end of the case. Is this information you know, also being sent to President Muhammad Buhari? Is he aware? At that, at, that as, at that time, as at that time that that happened, it was not President Muhammad Buhari that was, that was there. Uh, that was there. It was in the life, life, life of the past administration. Uh, because I was I was the media advisor to the to the then Governor Jang at that time, and so I knew the the, the situations very well. And the, the the that the past administration did raise this, and we are raising it in the public in in, in the public domain now. Uh, whatever happened uh, is in the public. It happened with human beings, and it will not be out of place for the for for the federal authorities, even in this administration, to raise the issues. All what we are what we are saying is is to be able to find solutions to the problem that we are. We have to go back and dust the books, dust all those white papers, dust what has happened. If we want to be fair to ourselves and make sure that justice is delivered. Because justice denied is not good. It, 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 there will be a reoccurrence. And, 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 God, and, and this peace matter, this peace process, it should be, all hands must be on deck.
When you say government, uh, and I have problems with that. Yes, we know that government holds, uh, it has a responsibility. We have sworn to even protect lives of property. And that is what we are doing. But all hands must also be on deck because government is also human beings. Government is not an aberration, it's not a utopia. Government is, pe is human beings, is people. Um, before we, um, I'm going to be introducing another guest uh, to, of course, join in this conversation. Um, but I, I want to ask uh, Dan Manjang, the Commissioner for Information Plateau State, how do you feel personally about these uh, killings in your state? Uh, we feel very bad, very, very bad, very sad, because there's a lot that we need to have, been, to have, to have done. We have, been, we, we have gone so many years backwards now because the resources are being channeled to what we did not bargain for, and even if the, it was something that we bargained for, we will not bargain for crisis. We feel bad. I feel bad as a human being. We feel bad as a government. That our, our peace initiative has been ruptured, that our developmental efforts are being slowed down. And so uh, and every, we feel bad when even an animal is killed wrongly. So we feel bad that even if it is a human being, only one soul that we lose, uh, wrongly, uh, we feel very bad about it. So uh, it's not a thing that any, any right-thinking person on Plato State would say is happy about. All right. I'm going to get back to you, you know, with regards to the relationship and uh, uh, communications with the uh, Commission of Police in Plateau State. But before that, I want to introduce Dave Zoyong. He's a, a native of Anaguta. I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, good morning, Mr. Zoyong. Good morning. Nice to be here. Thanks for joining us. So, so, so I want you know you to quickly also share your views on what currently is going on in Plateau State. Of course, if you've been following, we're currently speaking with the Commissioner for Information. Um, but you know you're a native, so kindly share with us as best as you can describe it what is going on in Plateau State. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, like you said, I'm Anaguta by tribe, and. Um, it's a very rude shock for my community because this is the very first time it's happening to us as a community and uh, we're getting to the global limelight just for the wrong reasons. Um, if you are familiar, eventually if you maybe get to read about the history of the language of we are only found in just north local government. You probably haven't heard of us because there hasn't been any reason negatively to be heard about. We've lived peacefully with everybody in the state. Every people that come to Joss know us as a peace-loving people. But it was a very rude shock for us to wake up and see. From no provocation, our people were slaughtered, burned to ashes while they sleep. You know, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm still going through the trauma. The community is still going through mourning. We've read about this. We've sympathized with people. Uh, in Plato City, there's a... We have our Biron brothers that have suffered this over time. We have the Iroquois people that have suffered over time. But, you know, you will never know how it feels if it happens to you. You know, so this is something we never prepared for. We just read the pages of these papers um, in, that happens to other places in the country. We see our brothers, close neighbors, these things happen to them. But to experience it yourself is um, a completely different thing. So the, the atmosphere, it's... Um, it's, it's very tensive now. We are trying to grapple with the fact that we are we are we are, we are in, a, in a very dire, dire situation right now in Jaws. Uh, there, there's a coffee going on, but you know there, there are talks. We are comparing notes and see what we did wrong or what we did not do right for this thing to happen to us as a community. Is there any information with regards to the people responsible for these attacks and these killings? Um, you know, it's too, it's too, I don't want to be presumptuous about that. Uh, there's there's a, a process, you know, um, identifying, arresting, identifying those that are responsible for this. I spoke with the Commissioner of Police yesterday. He assured me that there were 10 arrests being already made. Uh, already made and um, I, I hope they will, you know, bring out the identities of those that are involved in this uh, um, from from stories from what has happened in the neighboring communities, um, it has been you know it, it's, 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 it's said that it's the Fulani people that do this, but I don't want to say it's Fulani people that did this to us until the proper investigation is done. And um, I'm sure I'm aware that there are a couple of people that uh, 
uh, injured and um, uh, have identities of them that those are different to them, but they still have to, to be profiled through the security agencies to have a particular identity of those that are responsible for this. Okay, and then, then also, you know, speak about the uh, conversations of this being a communal clash, you know, between two tribes. You remember some, some time ago there was the Irigue community that also had its own chaos. Um, so is there also those possibilities that this is really just two communities fighting each other? Or is it, you know, land grabbing, as uh, the uh, Commissioner for Information had earlier mentioned? Is there possibilities that it's maybe people trying to, you know, uh, kick or kill and drive some people away from their land? I will go with the latter, because when you say there's a community clash, there must be two communities involved. And there must be casualties on both sides or some sort of, you know, uh, imbalance in the, in, the, in, the, in the umbrella group. But in this case, people were sleeping. So how is it a clash? You know, uh, I, 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 we, we are blessed with a very, very fertile land in, 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 in Jos. And um, I will not run it from a theory that is a deliberate act to take over the land. We, we, there, 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 are, there are complaints that there are illegal, you know, encroachments in lands in Jos. There are, there are green areas that are being encroached upon, upon by, by people close to this, this place that this thing happened. There, there, there have been court cases and judgments concerning this, and nothing has been done by government to reclaim these lands. And I'm, I'm aware that there were attempts a couple of some, some years ago in the last administration that when the process was going to come to bear, uh, the government set up a, a, a tax force uh, for, 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 for city renewal, they called it then, and the tax force went, demolished houses in one part of the state, and when they got there, they were rebuffed by the people that illegally are occupying those places with weapons, and nothing has been done since then. So the theory of land grabbing is totally in place. I believe it absolutely. Okay. Um, before we go back to Commissioner for Information Plateau State, Dan Manjang, um, Mr. Zoyong, I want you to also, you know, quickly share your views on, um, you know, an incident that took place a few weeks ago where there was reports of uh, about 20 uh, travelers that were murdered. Um, was that properly described? Uh, what, what I can tell you is um, the same thing you read or uh, investigate as a journalist. Uh, I totally condemn the fact that people are traveling and this thing happens to them. But you see, I am I'm also aware that, you know, there are times where passions are ignited. There are, there are people who become collateral damages to things they know nothing about. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that the day this thing happened, these people were going to bury, uh, you know, the, the, the kids and kings that were killed by, by Fulani people, because they are called Fulani people. And it just happened that these other people are flying who are passing through that route. It's a very bad coincidence. I totally condemn it. It's not a good thing. They are just victims of what they don't know anything about. All right. I want us to go back to the Dan Manjang, the Commissioner for Information Plateau State. Uh, Mr. Zoyong, kindly hold on. Uh, Mr. Manjang, can you still hear us? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, great. Um, uh, Mr. Zoyong has, of course, shared his views and uh, also agrees with your narrative concerning the land grabbing uh, uh, perspective. But I, I want you to speak with regards to the Commissioner of Police in Plateau State and how you know he has also assisted you know you know in the recent times in helping solve this crisis. Yeah, well, uh, it is not only the Commissioner of Police, the, the GOC Third Armored Division has been up and doing, and the Inspector General of Police have been up and doing uh, in, in, in this matter. Uh, and so uh, the gentlemen are doing their best to make sure that uh, we restore peace on, on the plateau. Uh, they have their challenges like any other person would have, uh, mm -hmm. But we, we 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 want to put it on record that even mm -hmm. yesterday the commissioner of police was was with mm -hmm. the, was was with the with the people. Uh, he followed through even to the government house where the corpses were deposited. He was there. He was talking to the communities, uh, talking to the people, trying to pacify them. And I can assure you, um, we didn't have any casualty. We didn't have any incident. We, he allowed uh, the people to vent their, their anger, 
to be able to so that they can calm down and we thank god that there was no incident at the house of assembly there's no incident at government house that would escalate the, the situation uh, beyond what it was under normal circumstances or in other climes you would have even uh, incurred uh, further casualty but the, the 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 security agencies acted in the most professional manner that they should and so we want to give we we want to give uh, kudos to them even though there's much that they need to do to make sure that since they are occupying these territories for so this community uh, in uh, Yelwan Zangam yesterday they were complaining that oh, it seems we may have lost um the Commissioner for Information there, uh, Dan Manjang. Um, uh, Mr. Zoyong, can you still hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go back to you now and also get your thoughts on the response of the Governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong. Uh, news reports say that he also has visited President Mahmoudou Buhari and, you know, given updates on the security situation in the state and, you know, also asked for assistance for internally displaced persons. But I, I, I want to get your view on his response as the Chief Security Officer of Plateau State. Uh, well, you know, there, there's, a, there's a place of governance and there's a place of people who are governed. There's a place of security and a place of, of civilians. Um, the, 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 the governor has his protocol of speaking and concerning issues of state, and he has to be seen to be doing, you know, being in charge uh, but but I, it's, it's one thing to say this is happening, and for the person that is happening to 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 to, to agree whether it's happening properly or not. Um, but he's given his report to the president, and I, I don't know the, the full content of the report. But from what I gather, he gave he gave the, gov uh, the government the president the impression that Nomazi has returned to Joss. And unfortunately, it was while he was there that this happened. So I don't know at what level he, he got his intelligence or uh, estimates that gave him the you know the the content of what you told the president. Yeah, you know, I, I, um, I'm, I'm aware that the government is doing its best, you know, to, to calm the situation. And like I mentioned yesterday, I said, the, and I heard, I heard you also ask Mr. Manjan uh, about, the, about the coffee. Coffee is good, but coffee is, should not be good for certain people and other people. It has to be a totality. You know, those that are, 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 are at hinterlands, which is the center of attacks in Plata State, are the people that need security more than those that in the in, in townships. There are there particular spots in town that if you put security people, uh, crisis will not escalate. But the people that are vulnerable are those in the villages, in the outskirts, that these marauders go to with no security. So I, I don't know the definition of coffee. Is coffee just meant for people that are living in town or at particular places? Because this kind of happened when there was coffee. That's what I keep saying. There was coffee just behind the university of jobs. So the university community itself is not sick. You know, I, we all know that uh, we, we heard that a lot of parents are removing their words from the university. You know, members, governments are taking their words out of the university because of the exposure of the university to uh, these this, this, this communities. I, I think they should go beyond speaking the, the normal and make sure that there is a physical presence of security people to assure the people that we're here. Okay, um, hold on. Um, welcome back, Mr. Manjang. Yes, I'm with you. All right. Um, Mr. Zoyong believes that the curfew may not be enough. And, you know, maybe if there was going to be a curfew, it should be centered on, you know, the communities where these crises uh, is taking place, not just uh, not you know, across the whole of uh, Plateau State or, or not across all of just North. Um, Mr. Manjang, is, is it in any way, you know, how does it feel knowing that as we are speaking currently, there's a possibility that there are still persons in just north and or maybe other parts of the state that are heavily armed um, in some of those communities, maybe waiting for, you know, the next time that they can strike. Um, what, you know, does that make you, or how does that make you feel? And what would be your, the steps that you would take if you were in positions uh, to, you know, take action? Yeah, well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it is very sad, uh, whether we like it or not, 
uh, there is proliferation of arms uh, in the hands of of people. Uh, people illegally own weapons. Uh, uh, there is a huge uh, issue that has to be grappled with. There, there was a point in the life of this administration that we wanted to to mop up uh, those those uh, weapons and provide an amnesty. We gave a deadline. We could only retrieve a, a, part of, a few of it. I, all I can say is, is that uh, it is it is very sad that um, we will have this kind of situation. And like you did say, if I were uh, in a position uh, of this to handle this matter, uh, the way we are going about it uh, is the way I would also go about it. I will appeal to the sensibilities of the people. There are people, there are stakeholders that you need to sit down. Religious institutions have a responsibility. Our religious leaders have a responsibility. Community leaders have a responsibility. And to a very large extent, uh, we have to now change our style of talking to stakeholders. When you gather stakeholders uh, in government house and you talk to them, and you don't involve the people that perpetrate these acts, the youths that are full of energy, that are unemployed, that are, uh, are doing these things, uh, then they would not have done much. So what we are doing as a government is that we are telling community leaders, local government chairmen, uh, councillors, that they should cascade it down to their various communities, because I believe that there's, there's nobody that does not have the person that he listens to. And so we must go back to the drawing board and look at the issue dispassionately. And the target should be these youths that are, that are causing this, this harm. The, the other issue is to be able to reduce to the barest minimum uh, the, the, the way they can get access to illicit drugs and, and, and things that they consume. Because there's no human being that is, is in his right senses that will go and commit this kind of heinous crisis, 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 uh, a, a crisis. So we, we all have to put our hands on that. The curfew, I heard my brother uh, David talking about it. We agree that there are, there are issues uh, that, uh, that, that criminality is still being perpetrated under curfew. But him and me know with all sincerity that without the curfew, it would have been a free-for-all fight. And the situation would have been uncontrollable. They would have not had, just not today, would have not had, had probably plateau state. Without the curfew, the curfew has helped to put people in check. The curfew has helped to be able to occupy. And that is what we are doing. If there's any, there's nobody in the position of authority, including my brother David, that is happy about what is happening in plateau state right now. Well, free for all fights, you know, you know, paints a picture that there's fights on both sides, you know, two people clashing. But from what, you know, has been described in our conversation, it feels like it's just one side attacking the other. Um, Mr. Uh, Zoyong, I'm, I'm coming back to you now. Um, these communities that were previously attacked, do you have any information as to who currently occupies these communities? Is it still the, you know, the core indigents or is it, you know, maybe some of those who had attacked? and have taken over these communities? Uh, I will give you uh, information as, um, you know, spoken by the senator representing, representing the Northern Zone. He had come out categorically clear to say that over 60 villages have been taken over by Fulani herdsmen in the Northern Zone, and they're currently being occupied by them. Physical structures, so the, when, when people say these people are unknown, they are unknown. I don't know the definition of unknown. You know the locations. They have told you this is the houses. They say geographical contiguity they are occupying. It's not hidden. It's not in mass. So it, 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 it's, that, it's a very straightforward answer. These people are known. Their locations are known. The, 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 the structures are known. They are in particular places, especially in Barak Ladi and Rim local governments. They are known. So I, I, it's a straightforward answer, sir. Mr. Ma Mr. Manjang, uh, would you confirm that? As a matter of fact, we have always said that people that perpetrate the act, even the governor has corroborated to say that uh, it is not, they are not ghosts, that they are not unknown. But we, we, we don't want to stereotype people because I can assure you that uh, as a government, 
I have said it times without number. Even when they are known, there's the enabling environment. Government has been able to put a bill and then sign, it has been signed by His Excellency into law. And to land grabbing, I've said it, that this matter is, is about land grabbing. And I've said that the enabling law, it without you cannot even prosecute even when you know them. You cannot even prosecute when the enabling law is not there. But for government to have provided the enabling law for them to be prosecuted, uh, the people are now uh, are now challenged to go ahead uh, to, for the prosecution. They have the enabling law to be able to prosecute. It's not for government to go, to continue to to to, to prosecute what the, what government needs to do. It has done by providing the, the the enabling environment for people to prosecute. And like like uh, he did say, it's not for we everything that happens is human beings that perpetrate acts. They are not they are not they are not they are not uh, ghosts. The governor has said there is not ghosts that kill people. It's not, there's, we should, they should not be called unknown. The communities, there's nobody that lives in a community that is not known. And if stranger elements come in, they could, they, they, the community leaders should be able to know. There should be rules of engagement of living in a community. And yeah. government recognizes the, those rules of engagement. Mr. Manjang, so, so this is where I have a challenge. You, and one of the reasons that I asked about the relationship with the Commission of Police in Plateau State, if you have that rapport, you have that relationship, um, you are saying that, or you agree that these communities have been, you know, infiltrated. They, they know the, the new faces in the community. They know that these communities have been infiltrated by foreign elements. You don't want to stereotype them, and that is fine. But does, does this mean that the Commission of Police himself also knows that these communities and the people who have you know, perpetrated these crimes and killed indigents of Plateau State and Joss North are known and they are still in, in Plateau State and they are still in Joss North, but the Commission of Police cannot take action? Is that what you're saying? No, that is not what I am saying. That is not what I am saying. I say they are being profiled, they are being prosecuted. It's not enough for the the commissioner of police has to do his own. He is a gentleman, a fine gentleman that assisted this community, that assisted this state, that is on that is up and doing, and it, it is it, until investigation is done, until they are prosecuted in law, they they are presumed to be to be to be suspects until it is proved beyond reasonable doubt. So it takes beyond the commissioner of police. It takes. It is a holistic approach that has to be done. It's not to, to, to begin to cast as passions on the commissioner of police at this moment. I would not do that. Yeah, but, uh, well, he is, you know, currently heading the police in, um, in uh, Plateau State, you know, and if you, both of you agree that these elements are known, um, arrests have been made. I asked you earlier, and that's one of the reasons that I asked you earlier, if anybody has truly been prosecuted over time, from Joshua Darie to Jonah Jiang to currently Simon Lalong, if there's anybody who has been truly prosecuted for these, you know, killings, and, you know, you weren't 100% affirmative that anybody, you even said that some people are arrested, they're found culpable, but their files disappear to Abuja, and that's the end of the case. And so, why, that's why I'm asking you now. So, yes, the Commissioner of Police is a fine gentleman, but he is aware from both of you, what, um, what both of you have said, that there's people who have committed these atrocities that are still in Plateau State, that are still in those communities, that have taken over the lands that they have chased people from, but he still has not taken any action. You know, you've said that they are still investigating, but from what action, we've seen in the action, past... Action, action, action has to be taken, has to be holistic. It's not only, he, 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 there's where, where his rights begin and end, that is where the rights of another person begins and end. He cannot go, he can, the best he can do is to profile them, take them to court, yeah. and the courts to prosecute. And until somebody, there are, we, we know the judicial system in this country, there is a case that has stayed in the Supreme Court for 22 years. Right. We know the judicial system in this country. So what I'm saying is that uh, is that it is holistic. All right. But um, any attempt, everybody has the the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. Everybody has his own share. Uh, has his own has where his limits begin and, and terminate. All right. Um, I'm going so, to. You I cannot want to... cross boundaries and begin to say the, you do the job of the other people. Absolutely. Um, I want us to wrap up with Dave Zoyong. If you can, in 30 seconds, quickly also respond to my last uh, questions. 
uh, before we go. Yes, um, I, I, what I'll say here is that this problem predates this present commercial for this. Uh, like my brother said, Dan, um, you, when you speak of government, you, you speak of government as an entity. When you make separation, the, the, you talk about three arms of government, there are supposed to be three arms working as a unit. And I'm aware that the only thing that has stopped this implementation of the white paper she spoke about is the political will. And who has the will? Is the government. So I don't know if there's a difference in, um, in, in, the, in, this, in this government. It's, it's something, there are documents, there are literature we've gone through that are very, if you read the content of the white papers, they are supposed to have nipped this, this, this crisis in Plato State from, from the beginning. But it's the political will. And who has the will? It is the same government. All right. Except we have a clear court decision between the state and federal government and blame the federal government or the state government for not doing the right thing. They will keep rolling. But they, like I said, these people are known. They are profiled. They know them. There are, there are, there are crises. You are not occupying my house and I'm saying I'm profiling you. You come to my house, kill me, take over the house, and I report and I say they're profiling you while you are still living in the house. It doesn't make sense to me. All right. Um, Dave Zoyong. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Dan Manjang, thank you both for sharing uh, this morning with me and for, um, of course, being a part of the breakfast. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. And that's where we wrap up the breakfast this morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to join us on at, uh, at our uh, social media handles at Plus TV Africa on Instagram and Facebook. Same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa.